Wow, look at that good-looking group of people. You all know my eyesight's not that good, right? You know who you are. Hey, welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, April 6, 2021, 6 p.m. Pursuant to the governor's executive order number 20-36 and 21-02, and due to the concerns related to the coronavirus, this city council meeting will be conducted virtually. No member of the city council is attending in person with the exception of the mayor. All other members are appearing virtually and this meeting is closed to the physical attendance of the public. The public can view the meeting of the city's, on the city's Facebook page by viewing the meeting live. However, no participation via Facebook will be allowed. Please call the Community Relations Department at 402-515-6259 to obtain the information to attend virtually and participate when allowed. I would ask that all the public attending via GoToMeeting please mute your microphones. Members of the public will only be allowed to speak during public hearings once opened up and the public opened up to the public and I will call on members of the public one at a time to speak. Agendas can be found on the city's website. We will skip the Pledge of Allegiance and invocation uh, due to the virtual meeting. And I will call the meeting to order. Susan, would you take roll call, please? Councilman Stinson? Here. Councilman Cook? Here. Councilman McCaw? Here. Councilman Preister? Here. Councilman Burns? Here. And Councilwoman Welch. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. This meeting is an, uh, will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. It can also be found online under Nebraska Revised Statutes 84-1407 through 84-1414, as well as the Governor's Executive Orders 20-36 and 21-02. Item number five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims and advisory committee reports. I'm looking for a motion. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. Any comments or questions regarding the agenda? Agendas? Seeing none, Susan, would you take the vote, please? Stinson? Yes. Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Reister? Yes. Burns? Yes. And Welch? Yes. Motion carried. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where this item is unless otherwise removed. And do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Councilman Burns? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Preister. Motion by Burns, seconded by Preister. And thank you for announcing your name. It makes it easier here. Any questions on the consent agenda? Please vote, Susan. Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. And Stinson? Yes. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item seven is special presentations. This evening we have two. 7A, proclamation declaring April 22nd, 2021 as Earth Day in Bellevue, Nebraska. And uh, I was able to uh, present this uh, the other day here at the council chambers with the uh, folks from Green Bellevue. And um, I think uh, Stacy has a video of that uh, proclamation reading and we'll go to that right now.
Is there volume, Stacy? Just can't hear it. Nope. No sound. Let's move on. Sorry, folks, it worked in the test. Go ahead, move on. Sorry, folks. Okay, we'll move on, but we will post that uh, video on YouTube, correct, Stacy? Uh, Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor, for recognizing me. And it was, it would have been a nice video to see. I just want to comment that anybody who's interested in getting more information can go to greenbellevue.org and either on the city's website, there's a link, or directly on greenbellview.org. There'll be a month long set of events, most of them virtual. There'll be some fun, a lot of activities. We have churches, Omaha Public Schools, Bellevue Public Schools. We've got a host of fun activities where you can do good while helping the community to be a better place to live and have fun at the same time. So please join in and you can see the video, but you can enjoy it even more by doing things. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, and I would just say that uh, um, Senator Crawford was here along with uh, two uh, young adults, uh, look like good future leaders, uh, and they also talk. So do log in to uh, YouTube and, uh, and listen to it. Uh, we'll move on to item 7B, presentation by Eric Ernest, Fire Department Physician Medical Director, outlining the CARES data for the Bellevue Fire Department for 2020. And that's the cardiac arrest registry. So uh, Dr. Ernest, are you on? I am on. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, thank you to all the council members uh, for having me on tonight. Also, thanks to uh, Chief Guido to uh, allow me to present the data from the fire department this evening. So um, for those who I've not met in person, my name is uh, Dr. Eric Ernest. I serve as the physician medical director for the Bellevue Fire Department. Uh, I also hold the faculty position at the University of Nebraska Medical Center uh, and serve in a number, a number of other medical direction capacity roles. Um, also serve as the medical director for the Sarpy County uh, Dispatch uh, Center. So the reason I'm presenting to you tonight is that uh, as a part of our quality assurance processes within the fire department, uh, we have been subscribed now uh, for almost five years to the what we call the CARES registry, uh, which that is the uh, cardiac arrest registry to enhance survival. And what that is, is that it is a way to standardize and track the patients that we encounter who have undergone a cardiac arrest within our community uh, and to be able to look at uh, uniform metrics uh, as it pertains to different aspects of the cardiac arrest and to be able to track those not only from year to year, but then also benchmark ourselves against uh, not only local agencies within our state, but then also nationally as well. And so when I uh, came on as medical director, this is something that I had encouraged uh, our agency to take on and to be able to kind of see and give us a true uh, reading as to how we are doing overall with cardiac arrest. And so just by way of just a little bit of background in regards to cardiac arrest, just to kind of give you a sense of what, what, a, what a problem it is for uh, the medical community for uh, the, the citizens in general. So there's approximately 350,000 people in the United States every year that experience an out-of-hospital uh, cardiac arrest or sudden death. And approximately 90% of those people actually go on uh, to uh, die from their cardiac arrest. So a relatively low survivability rate uh, when you think about uh, someone having uh, an event out of hospital. And so despite uh, now really it's been decades of research uh, that our outcomes overall when we look at the national data is really, really relatively poor uh, with only about 10.4% uh, overall survivability uh, over the past 30 years, which uh, really goes to show you how lethal uh, this problem is. And so in our, with participation in the out-of-hospital cardiac registry, it enables, like I mentioned, communities to compare and contrast one another in terms of their patient populations, the interventions that we do, and then the outcomes. 
uh, all within the kind of guidance and idea that we're trying to improve the process as a part of our overall QA uh, initiatives. And so character industry was uh, developed to do that. Uh, the idea being to try to save more lives, strengthen collaboration between partners, including 911 centers like Starkey County Dispatch, uh, first responders, uh, such as our police departments, EMS, and then the hospitals where the patient uh, will end, go on to get definitive treatment. And so, like I mentioned, there's annual national and statewide reports for benchmarking to see how your local municipality or agency does as compared to the uh, state and national data. So, um, in terms of who's on our team and just uh, as points of recognition, um, uh, you know, with any cardiac arrest uh, and any person that accesses the 911 system, the first point of contact is the Sarpy County Dispatch Center, uh, where almost all of our 911 calls come in through. And uh, I serve as a medical director in that capacity, and we've been working locally at the dispatch center to try to quickly identify cardiac arrest patients and get our dispatchers to um, <clears throat> encourage the caller to try to get hands on the chest and to perform bystander CPR as, as quickly as possible. So that being one of the first chains and chains and or excuse me links in the chain of survival. Sorry, um, we then move on to our local department. Obviously, we've had a very strong uh, support from our command staff. Uh, uh, Chief Guido has been instrumental in trying to give us the resources we need within the EMS bureau to carry out our mission for providing high quality medical care. So there's myself and Dr. Campos who serve as medical directors for the fire department our EMS supervisor, Sherry Lynch, as well as our EMS captains who uh, serve as kind of an EMS contact point for our three shifts, and then also our frontline EMTs and paramedics, all kind of make up that pre-hospital team to try to deliver the best quality care. Uh, we wouldn't be, we'd be remiss without mentioning also our hospital partners, Bellevue Medical Center in Brest and in Omaha, and also uh, Midlands Hospital, we will occasionally transport to as well as Burger Mercy. Um, so just by a quick way of kind of uh, definitions, because I'm going to use uh, two separate definitions tonight to kind of go through the data with you. And there's two things that we track in cardiac arrest. There's what we call overall survivability rate. So that really means all comers, irregardless of your cause of cardiac arrest, whether or not a bystander did CPR on you, whether or not you had an AED applied. These are, this is all of our, all of our cardiac arrests put into one uh, bundle. We then look at the people that we would expect to have a good survivability. So that's what's called the Utstein bystander uh, criteria, which basically means that the cardiac arrest was witnessed uh, either by, say, a family member or a bystander, that bystander CPR was performed, an AED was applied, um, and that, uh, you know, that the ongoing care was by EMS. And so really we expect that that group that got kind of the best bundle of care, if you will, we would hope to see better outcomes with those patients. So uh, to get into the nitty gritty and the, the meat and potatoes of the data, uh, when we look at our survivability rate in 2019, Bellevue was around 11.5% uh, in terms of survivability uh, for overall. So just a hair above what the national average was. Uh, and then when we look at our Utstein bystander rates, which is again, that better kind of grouping of people for 2019, we were at 25%. Uh, nationally, that was hovering somewhere right around 30 to 32%, um, if I, my memory serves me correctly. We made some initiatives uh, within the departments in seeing our numbers, um, which had dipped from the year be before that from 2018, and really took kind of a hard look at our overall cardiac arrest uh, package, how we run cardiac arrests, uh, how we do our quality assurance processes from uh, immediate review with the crew to a, a more in-depth quality assurance uh, chart or a, a phase sheet that we use with our crews to give them feedback. And I'm pleased to report that uh, our improvement uh, over that year and then going into 2020 uh, was, was markedly better. Um, so when we look at overall survivability rate, we went from 11.5% in 2019 to 22% uh, in 2020. When we compare that number to what uh, we were doing statewide and nationally, we were at 22% for overall survival. Statewide was at 14.2 and national was at 8.9. So markedly better in our overall survival. Uh, what I'm really pleased with is when we look at the Utstein bystander uh, cardiac, cardiac arrest survivors, who are that better you know, group, so to speak, we went from 25% in 2019 up to 75% in 2020. And statewide, we compare that. So we had 75% in Bellevue. Statewide had 35.4. 
and national was 36.2. So we were far and a bit away better than what was happening on a statewide and national level and we uh, made a significant jump uh, from 2019, 2020. Uh, a question that I frequently get is, well, did you have more or less cardiac arrests? And we actually had relatively the same number of cardiac arrests uh, to both years with the only difference of, of, of about two cardiac arrests from 2019 and 2020. So statistically, uh, not really something that would make a difference in terms of total numbers. So um, overall, I think, again, a great job to everyone involved. It, it's not just one person or one change. I think it's a whole series of changes, but uh, pleased to report that uh, the citizens of Bellevue, I think, are being well cared for by our fire departments. And uh, we're seeing some great outcomes when it comes to cardiac arrest. So with that, I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dr. Ernest, for that information. That's awesome. Um, good news as well. And uh, thank you for your guidance to our uh, fire department. Um, does the council have any questions for Dr. Ernest? That was a good presentation. You answered a lot of questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you again for having me. I appreciate it and uh, have a good rest of your night. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item number nine, approved citizen communications. We did not receive any. Uh, we did not receive any liquor licenses on item number 10. Item number 11, ordinances for adoption, third reading. We have none this evening. Item 12, ordinances for public hearing, second reading, 12A, ordinance number 4029, an ordinance to amend article six, chapter 19 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adding a new section 19-83 regarding prohibition of engine braking. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4029, an ordinance to amend Article 6, Chapter 19 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adding a new section 19-83 regarding prohibition of engine braking and to provide an effective date. Thank you. I will open up 12A for public hearing. So if there's anybody in the audience that would like to talk regarding ordinance number 4029, now is the time. Anybody in the public wanting to talk uh, regarding ordinance number 4029? Hearing nobody um, come forward, I will close the public hearing and I will, uh, I guess if there's any questions, other words, we'll move on. Okay, the third reading will be April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 13, ordinances for introduction. First reading, 13A, ordinance number 4030, amending section 12-57 through 12-85 of the municipal code pertaining to fireworks. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4030, an ordinance to amend section 12-57 section through 12-85 of the Bellevue Municipal Code pertaining to fireworks to repeal all previous versions of the same and to provide an effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. And I'll say this a couple times, but the April 20th meeting will be an in-person meeting. We uh, um, have a lot of uh, readings, so uh, I think we're gonna, we, we just decided to move it up one, one meeting and we will meet in person April 20th 2021 for these public hearings. Item 13B, ordinance number 4031, ordinance pertaining to adoption of the 2021 International Fire Code. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4032, an ordinance to amend sections 8-16 through 8-18 of chapter eight of the Bellevue City Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the International Building Code with amendments and changes to repeal sections 8-16 through 8-18 of chapter eight of the Bellevue City Code as heretofore existing to provide for the publication of the ordinance in pamphlet form 
and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be in person here at the council chambers, April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 13C, ordinance number 4032, ordinance pertaining to the adoption of the 2021 International Building Code, International Residential Code, and the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4032, an ordinance to amend sections 8-16 through 8-18 of Chapter 8 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the International Building Code with amendments and changes to repeal sections 8-16 through 8-18 of Chapter 8 of the Bellevue City Code as heretofore to existing to provide for the publication of the ordinance in pamphlet form and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be here in the council chambers on April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 13D, ordinance number 4033, ordinance pertaining to amendments of the 2021 International Residential Code. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4033, an ordinance to amend section 8-18.6 of Chapter 8 of the Bellevue City Code pertaining to the amendments and changes to the International Residential Code 2021 edition to repeal Section 8-18.6 of Chapter 8 of the Bellevue City Code as heretofore existing to provide for the publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be here in the council chambers April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 13E, ordinance number 4034, ordinance pertaining to the adoption of the 2021 International Mechanical Code. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4034, an ordinance to amend sections 27-196 through 27 dash 196.1 of chapter 27 of the Bellevue City Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the International Mechanical Code to repeal sections 27-196 through 27-196.1 of the Bellevue City Code as heretofore existing to provide for the publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. The second reading and public hearing will be April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Item 13F, ordinance number 4035, ordinance pertaining to the adoption of the 2021 Uniform Plumbing Code, Uniform Swimming Pool, Spa and Hot Tub Code, and the 2021 International Fuel Gas Code. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4035, an ordinance to amend sections 27-85 through 27-87 of chapter 27 of the Bellevue City Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the Uniform Plumbing Code to amend section 27-85.1 of the Bellevue City Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the International Fuel Gas Code to amend Section 27-86 of the Bellevue City Code by adopting the 2021 edition of the Uniform Swimming Pool Spa and Hot Tub Code to amend Section 27-87 of the Bellevue City Code pertaining to the amendments and changes to the newly adopted codes to repeal Sections 27-85 through 27-87 of the Bellevue City Code as heretofore existing to provide for the publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. The second reading for ordinance number 4035 in public hearing will be here in the council chambers April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Just a couple more, Susan. 13G, ordinance number 4036. Request to rezone lots one through three, Old Orchard Place, replat two, being a replat of lots 15A, 15B, and 15C, 
Old Orchard Place from AG and RE to RE and RG50 for the purpose of existing residential development. Applicant is DWS Land Surveying, General Location, 9100 South 13th Street. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Yes, ordinance number 4036, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of ordinance number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 9100 South 13th Street, more particularly described in section one of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. The second reading and public hearing will be April 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Uh, 13H, ordinance number 4037, an ordinance to add new sections to chapter six regarding leash and muzzle requirements for pit bull breeds, breed ambassadors, insurance, and the NHS annual reporting procedures. Uh, Councilman Burns, Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number four zero. Mayor. Yeah. Councilman Cook. I apologize for interrupting. I would like to make a motion that we postpone the first reading of this ordinance until May 4th. And I'll second that. Um, until May 4th meeting. Uh, okay, so I've got a motion by Cook, seconded by Welch to postpone ordinance number 4037 to May 4th. Any discussion? Mayor, before there's discussion, there can be discussion on the motion to postpone, but there cannot be discussion on the underlying ordinance at this point. Okay, any discussion on the postponement? Councilman Preister? Mayor, I would just ask Councilman Burns if he has a uh, thought on the uh, layover essentially. I I think I'm I'm okay with it. I just want to hear from Councilman Cook and Councilman Welch maybe some justification for um, continuing it or moving it to the the first reading to the May fourth uh, meeting. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my reason for doing this is I like to have meetings where council members can meet with our staff and further discuss this. I'd like to also be able to review our current ordinances. And I would like to gather information from the Humane Society on, on this subject. I'm not sure where this is coming from. I wasn't aware of it. And I just think it's, it's a big issue that I would prefer right now we don't move forward until I can get some opportunity to talk to our staff, talk to the Humane Society probably talk to the police department and review our ordinances. Um, and that's that's my reason for making the motion tonight. Okay. I, I would, oh. Councilman Burns? Yeah, What's your login? Ask if, uh, let's see a second. So if we, if Mayor, we, before you proceed, and Councilman Burns, sorry, there's a caller that just arrived and you are unmuted and we can hear you. Could you please mute your phone if you just arrived? Uh, you're probably talking to me. Give me one second. I, yes, thank you. So I don't get to participate. I would just ask, um, do you, if we postpone it to the May 4th, that would mean, I mean, we'd be looking at six weeks out from May 4th before we even got to the third reading. And I'm just kind of wondering if right now, I mean, officially today, we'd have six weeks to gather any information. I'm just wondering if that, that isn't sufficient time for everybody. Um, because then we'd also be able to have the opportunity to, you know, obtain information within the next two weeks, have public hearing, um, and then have another two weeks to gain any additional information, and then, you know, be able to vote on that. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Burns, my feeling is, is I'm on the Board of Health, 
and we recently did have a case involving an animal. And part of my concern here is, I believe we already have things in our ordinances, in our ordinance that would probably address a lot of these issues already. Um, and I, I, I just think I would like to have a chance to meet with everybody or at least have some discussion meet with our staff, get some more information from the Humane Society because I'm not sure of the purpose and the reason for this. We are given no information about it. It was simply presented to us as a change in the ordinance. And I think communication would have been important here to get a full understanding of what's going on. I, I don't wanna have the first reading tonight personally. And that was the reason for my motion. Um, you know, if it doesn't pass, then you know we'll move forward but i there is a lot here and i think it's going to take quite a bit to review things have meetings maybe have conversation with the humane society and stuff like that and and that's the reason why i asked for the postponement tonight and i at uh councilman pricer thank you mayor i'm i'm wondering if we have a compromise here I believe the motion was to lay it over to May 5th, the first meeting in May. Uh, perhaps we could have the first reading on the 20th. Uh, I think Councilman Burks mentioned that gives us two weeks before that meeting. That's just the first reading. That's a whole month before the public hearing. It, it would give us quite a bit of time and I think accomplish both what uh, Councilman Cook wants and also Thomas uh, Councilman Burns wants to do with his ordinance. Is that acceptable to you, Councilman Cook? Uh, Bree, just a quick question. Um, can we just postpone this indefinitely and bring it back if everybody's ready for it to the next meeting? No, the best way to do okay. it is postpone it and set a date. Okay. Um, and the motion on the floor is for May 4th. Um, and there can't be a different change unless Councilman Cooks withdraws his motion. The current motion on the floor is May 4th. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, you know, I'm gonna, the reason I seconded this because this is a very important issue and I think we need the time to be able to gather all the information to make good, right decisions regarding this and I don't see a reason that we need to rush this thing through. And I don't see it, there's like not an expiration date on this. It's just, we need the time to do, to develop and gather the information with regard to this because it's very important to the citizens of our community. Thank you. I will just step in as mayor. I also serve on the Board of Health and um, reading through the ordinance. Um, I guess I was quite surprised uh, not hearing anything about this ordinance ahead of time um, and it does seem I mean it just on a quick read it seems pretty harsh so I mean I, I would encourage the uh, council to give it a little bit more time I guess I don't know what I don't know if there's a big hurry there but um, I, I'm not sure where this uh, I, I'm not sure where the wording came from or if we're copying another city or 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 where, where that recommendation's coming from. So it, it, I guess it hit me by surprise. So I, I, I would think a little more time is, is important on it. Any other comments or questions? C Councilman Burns? Yeah, so I, without making any comment on the ordinance, um, so uh, City Administrator Risto was aware of this. He was included in all emails. Also legal has been working on this. Um, and so as far as gathering information, I'm okay with you know postponing it. I, I don't think anything's being fast-tracked because it is the normal three readings. Um, there is six weeks to prepare and get any information just like we would on any other ordinance. Um, and I'm okay with maybe postponing the, the first reading to April 20th um, so you guys can have that eight week period if needed. Um, as long as Councilman Cook's okay with that, I'm okay with that as far as a compromise goes. Okay, so right now we have postponement to 
uh, to May 4th, motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. If, uh, um, it's up to Councilman Cook if he wants to change that now. If not, we'll take the vote. But. Mayor, I, I don't want to change it. This, this ordinance, as an addition pertaining to a breed or a couple breeds of dogs, is very detailed. Is and I, I just don't know where it's coming from. And I and I will tell you, um, I just think for us to have meeting with staff, we want to call in three council members. Some council members may not want to show up. I want to get some information from the Humane Society. I might want to get information from the police department on calls. Uh, and and I want to go through all our ordinances because I think I think if we're going down the road looking at animals that maybe have potential history or or not history but from this day forward or whatever start having problems I, I i think it's already addressed in our ordinances and maybe we could make some minor changes to our ordinances which i think is just going to take time um you know and, and and maybe that's not the route we're going because i know mr burns presented this and i'm not i'm not trying to take it down a different road but maybe there's some changes we could just simple changes we can make to our ordinances and I just picking out a couple breeds of dogs and making this pertain to them I, I just don't understand the history the reason the background and I want to gather a lot of information so I, I'm not trying to be stubborn or disrespectful to Mr. Burns I, I am asking for this if we have to after our second reading if we put it on the agenda we might want to waive it I, I don't think it would warrant that I think that should be done in emergencies something like that i'm going to spend a lot of time on this to try to see where this is going and maybe what we could do differently or maybe maybe we move forward with it as written but i want to gather a lot of information i don't see it me having one or two meetings i look at several meetings and several phone calls to try to get this thing done so i'm going to leave my motion as is if it doesn't pass maybe we'll, we'll second i'll make us another motion to see how it goes thank you councilwoman welch your second still stand Yes, Mr. Mayor, it does. Uh, Councilman McCaw, do you have your hand up? You're muted. Yeah, if I take the mute button off. Sorry. Uh -huh. uh, you good. I, I'm, I'm going to support uh, the May 4th. Uh, and the reason, my reason is going to be for, for research reasons. Um, I do believe it's going to take a little bit of time and I need to read some things and and be ready when all this happens. So um, I would appreciate the extra time myself. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? We have a motion by Cook and a second by Welch to postpone ordinance number 4037 first reading to May, the meeting on May 4th. And has anybody checked, is that May 4th correct? our meeting it's correct that is okay. correct all right so please vote mr mccaw yes price yes. sir yes uh burns yes welch yes stinson yes and cook yes all voting yes, motion carried. All right, thank you. Item 14, public hearing on matters other than ordinances. We have none this evening. 15 is resolutions. 15A, resolution number 2021-10, repealing the city's temporary pandemic sick leave policy. And I'm looking for a motion. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2021-10. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any comments or questions on resolution 2021-10? Seeing none, please vote. Chrysler? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. Stinson? Yes. Cook? Yes. McCaw. Yes. All voting yes. Motion carried. 
Thank you. Item 16, current business. 16A, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the CDBG-CV round three subrecipient agreement with the Housing Foundation for Sarpy County in an amount not to exceed $145,479. Looking for a motion. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16A as written. Second, Stinson. Motion by Welch, second by Stinson. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Byrne? Yes. Welch? Yes. Stinson? Yes. Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Pricer? Yes. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item 16B, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the architectural engineering agreement with Leo A. Daly Company for the Bellevue Public Library renovation and addition project in a lump sum amount not to exceed $410,928. I need a motion. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve 16B. Second, Burns. Motion by Stenson, second by Burns. Any comments or questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to find out in the original as we were looking at this, now as I read the agreement, would they be actually designing three different options or have we narrowed it down to one? if perhaps Mr. Ristow could shed a little light on what this will actually do. Yeah, there'll be the design for option one, which only adds 300 feet, if you, 300 square feet. If you remember the other options added somewhere in the neighborhood of 1400 square feet to 10,000 square feet. So in, in this design, it's a complete gut of the inside rewiring, bring us up to speed on electrical and internet, internet capabilities. A little bit of the exterior, um, bring up the exterior for a little bit more appeasing um, entry to it. So I think the only other big design besides the 300 square feet is to add a drive through, which we found in the pandemic was very beneficial for us to have. So long term, um, his number one goal is keep this library in this sector of town where the greatest need is, it's where the greatest usage is coming from. Secondary is down the line in the next couple of years, then once this is complete, is to look at an annex on our Western planks, which would be a, a smaller, probably leased out building uh, capable of serving the Western side of our, our city, but this would be our main library. So um, it'll just be that one option that we shared with 300 square feet added to it. And that'll be for all the design and new planning. Okay, and, and that's helpful, I think, for the public to, to hear too. So. Thank you for that additional information. Any other comments or questions? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Risto, what is the, if we have a ballpark ETA as to how long this whole project is gonna take? So the design, first of all, the design and the move out, we will be, you guys signed the agreement to lease the space on uh, Bellevue University. Bellevue University has been a great partner at no cost to us. So over the course of the next 90 days, we'll prep that property for the transition. And that will give Leo A. Daly some time to start the design process for us in the existing building. And then they have to help us with load capacity and how we design temporary usage without exceeding capacity at, at the university. Uh, after that 90 days, it'll probably a year would be the construction phase over the course of the year. So we should be done within, we start this in the summer, anticipate it'll be done next summer. Awesome. So Julie, it's like moving into an apartment, having your house gutted, and then you get to move back to the new house. Congratulations. Okay, any other comments or questions? It'll, it'll be great when we're done, yes. Okay. Okay, we've got a motion by Stenson, seconded by Burns, uh, to approve 16B. Please vote. Welch? Yes. Stenson? 
Yes. Hood? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16C, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the professional engineering agreement with HGM Associates, Inc. for the East Bank stabilization of Mud Creek under Cornhusker Road Bridge in an amount not to exceed $15,500. Looking for a motion? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve 16C. I'll second that. Motion by Cook. Second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Susan? Jensen? Yes. Hood? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. And Welch? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16D, request approval to purchase two new Ford Utility Police Hybrids, not to exceed $75,486. Need a motion, please? Councilman Burns? Thank you. I move that we approve item 16D. Second. McCall. Motion by Burns, second by McCaw. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Susan? Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. And Stenson? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 16E, request approval to purchase of QTEL disposition module handheld scanner in an amount not to exceed $9,381. Looking for a motion. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we approve item 16E. Second. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Burns. Comments or questions? Please vote, Susan. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. Stenson? Yes. And Cook? Yes. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item 16F, request approval to purchase the WatchGuard Motorola Solutions video equipment, accessories, software, and storage services in an amount not to exceed $17,663. Good for a motion. Councilman Stenson? Make a motion. We approve 16F. Second. McCaw. Motion by Stenson. Second by McCaw. Any questions? Please vote. Susan? Reister? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16G, request approval to purchase a current model year Freightliner M2106 crane truck from Aspen Equipment Company in an amount not to exceed $136,167 per quote number, City of Bellevue, 98 PAL 442440956 V1. Need a motion. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16G. Second, Cook. Motion by Welch, second by Cook. Any comments, discussion, questions? Please vote, Susan. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. Stanson? Yes. Cook? Yes. 
Ata? Yes. Priester? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16H, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the contract with Crow Lawn Care LLC for the code enforcement mowing, cleanup, snow removal project in an amount not to exceed $40,000. I'll take a motion. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve item 16H as just read. I'll second that. Motion by Councilman Preister, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote, Susan. Mayor, I would have. Oh, sorry. Comment. Go ahead, Councilman think, Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a great idea to relieve some of the pressure on our staff. So doing this contract for code enforcement is good for the city, good for the citizens, and I think good for the taxpayers. So I'm, I'm glad we're finally getting to this. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any more discussion? Motion by Preister, seconded by Welch. Please vote. Susan? Welch? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. And Burns? Yes. All voting yes. Motion carried. Thank you. 16 I approve and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with HDR Architecture, Inc., for a study and master plan update for the Fort Crook Road redevelopment project in an amount not to exceed $154,950. Need a motion? Councilman Stenson? Make motion, we approve 16 aye. Second, and then I'd have a question. Okay, motion by Stenson. Second by Preister, and go ahead, Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I would just ask Mr. Risto, sometimes the council gets criticized for doing studies, and we have had a study of the Fort Crook Road. This is an update to it. What Would you explain what conditions have changed, why this is essentially a new study? So the HDR actually did the original study probably 10 years ago, if I recall right, if memory's right. Um, one of the key items in that study was the right-of-way issue. Uh, and it said that would be the challenge for the city is to get control of the right-of-ways from NDOT. That was never pursued in the past years. Um, just kind of left to uh, waggle in the wind, I guess you could say. So we've had over the course of a year, we've all admin have been working with NDOT to get the right-of-ways uh, defined and under control so we understand what we can do with the development. In addition to that, between the core and the NRD, they have responsibility for the waterways within there. So there's some negotiations there. So what this study will do is update what we kind of already plan. And there's not a, lot, a large change that will go with how that road structure will go. But along with that, Doug, you can correct me on this if I'm wrong is between NDOT and the core and NRD as we start the road plan of what this is gonna look like. So as we reduce the footprint of the road and then look at development within the right-of-way um, and how we buy that right-of-way back from the state, uh, it'll, be the, it'll be the vision of where that, that road goes. So it's truly just a, it's an update to what a lot of things have changed in the last 10 years. So we gotta bring it to current. Um, when you look at some of the, the developments we've already seen along Fort Crook Road, it kind of throws a, a little bit of a shade on that past study. So we, we see an update on it. And this one is, we, act, we have teeth to move this one forward, where before, without NDOT's agreement on the right-of-way, uh, no matter what we planned, we wouldn't have got anywhere. So this one, we actually have it documented from NDOT of what our rights are, what we can do from right away and then some definition um i don't ever want to repeat the meeting we had with the core because that was highly entertaining was it not um but we got some pretty good definitions of what we have to do and what we'll have to provide to them to move forward so puts us well on our way to get something done quickly that was a comprehensive answer and that was the 
what I was looking for, because I think the public does appreciate the newness if they understand it. And my appreciation to you and the mayor, the administration looked into this and the city and the past councils have been wanting to move forward with something now that Highway 75 is the interstate and not Fort Crook. So having access, having control is a real feather in the cap of the current administration in my view. So I'm very appreciative of where we're going now and having control to be able to do it as you say, and the fact that we've gotten to this point. So thank you. I'm happy to vote for it. Well, we truly, it's the rubber will hit the road on this one. I think I'm with you where it seems like in the past we've studied things to death and then we put these studies on the shelf. This one's not meant for a shelf. It's meant to get the rubber on the road. I think we got a pretty good idea of what we need to do. And through this study, we'll kind of finalize that and start making some good things happen. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? Councilman Stenson. I'd just like to say a lot of citizens have asked about Fort Crook Road. It's good to see that we're finally moving forward with this and we're finally going to do something with it instead of just sitting there, uh, vacant lots and everything. And I think the citizens will be happy once they start to see the progress that's gonna be made on that road now. Bob, I can, if I can add, I think you know, we've got MAPA, we've got who's the other agency. So there's some connectivity of what we do on 13th Street with this. So there's a lot of excitement as this being a main artery from Offutt to downtown Omaha. So there's some some things that we'll get and we can just like, will help us outline what MAPA will do with us. So um, the, help me out. I mean, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars in grants that they're coming in on the backside with us too. So uh, all of these things are actionable for us to put a, a pretty comprehensive plan together. Am I missing anything, Doug? I would I would I would only highlight what you just said, Jim. The the excitement isn't just here in Bellevue. It MAPA is delighted that we're taking this fresh look at Fort Crook Road. They're they're offering up um, roughly a hundred thousand dollars right now after this initial study is done so we can be more connected with as Jim said, downtown Omaha and Connecto and the BRT program. So um, there's a lot of excitement that Bellevue wants to take this on and move forward. And as Mr. Pricer identified, I, I think it is a feather in the cap of this administration for wanting to take this on. Okay, any more discussion? And thank you for all your support and everybody's hard work on that. I know that's uh, just another time consuming project, but it, it, it'll pay off in the end. So appreciate it. We have a motion by Stenson, second by Preister. Uh, please vote, Susan. Stenson. Yes. Cook. Yes. McCaw. Yes. Preister. Yes. Burns. Yes. And Welch. Yes. All voting yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16J, approve and authorize the mayor to sign a consent form for Crown Castle to sublease space on the tower at 2102 Betts Road. Take a motion. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve item 16J. Second. McCaw. Motion by Welch, second by McCaw. Comments or questions? Please vote, Susan. Cook. Yes. McCaw. Yes. Treister. Yes. Burns. Yes. Welch. Yes. And Stinson. Yes. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16K, recommendation to approve special fireworks application for Midwest Fireworks Wholesalers for a fireworks display at Bellevue East Prom on 5-15-2021, rain date being 5-16-2021 at approximately 10 p.m. 
Take a motion, Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Since this is my alma mater, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item 16K. Second. 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 Motion by Welch, seconded by Burns. Comments or questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to ask Councilwoman Welch if she will be there igniting those fireworks too then. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Preister, I'm gonna leave that to the professionals, thank you. Wise move, thank you. She is a firework. Okay, any more discussion, comments? Motion by Welch, second by Burns, please vote, Susan. McCaw? Yes. Preister? Yes. Burns? Yes. Welch? Yes. Simpson? Yes. And Cook? Yes. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 17 is the administration reports. Comments must be limited to items on the current reports. The monthly reports are given at the first council meeting of every month. March report attached to this, uh, to the April 6th council packet. Are there any questions on your uh, reports that you received? Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. I, I want to remark that in there, there is the annual budget for the city of Omaha and the city, or, I'm sorry, the, the city of Omaha, <laughs> the city of Bellevue. And once again, our finance department worked very well with the auditors. It is a very good audit. I think any city, especially right after the pandemic, would love to have as good an audit as we have had. So my appreciation to the finance department again, to all of our department heads who also helped to have input to the budget so that when the audit is done, it gets this kind of a good report. So I appreciate the audit and having that and having it behind us too. And then I have one other item it lists the uh, boys club in Bellevue and perhaps Mr. Ristow could expound a little bit about what the meeting may have been. And I just want to recognize that yes, in Bellevue, we do have a boys and girls club. It is at Bryan Middle School and it is doing a lot of very good work for a lot of young people. Mr. Ristow, could you tell us a little more about what that may have entailed? Yes, so no change at the um, Girls Boys Club in Bryan, and that is a highly successful program. The discussion is, could there be a second one in Bellevue, which would be down, maybe somewhere downtown Bellevue. So we're just exploring the opportunity in a partnership with Bellevue Public Schools, Boys and Girls Club, and the city as to what we could do to see how that would work out. So just, it's in its infancy right now, Don. Uh, can have no impact on the one in Bryan. And you find there's a lot of after school, um, there's no places for the kids to go in Old Town Bellevue. So that's kind of what motivated that they would be kind of that stand in in that sector of town. And there's a pretty huge need there. The school sees it. I think so. We're strictly exploring a partnership with them to see if that would work. It's been kind of spearheaded. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of spearheaded by a citizen that's a. Uh, has a passion for that and she's gotten a couple other people interested and uh, so all these preliminary meetings are, are, are going on so um, kudos to a citizen for stepping up and, and seeing if they can make a difference. And, and I congratulate whoever that citizen is but I appreciate that the administration, you Mayor and uh, Jim have followed through with it. Mission would be an excellent place for Boys and Girls Club and it's certainly needed in any school area, but the facilities, the staff, the additional after school hours programs make for an even better city. So I'm, I'm glad we can pursue it, see where it ends, and I look forward to someday having a, a groundbreaking and a ribbon cutting. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I real quickly want to also acknowledge our audit. Um, we did a lot of annexations and they were all brought into that audit. So there was a lot of, you know, not only higher numbers, but more citizens and more stuff put in this audit. But 
what's what's important on this audit is we got an unqualified opinion and we got no material weaknesses and that's both of those are good they're great and i just want to uh acknowledge rich severson marcy horton and their staff for their hard work and dedication they put a lot of time and effort into this and this is an excellent excellent result the unqualified opinion and no material witnesses i've been on the audit committee for many many years and i i'm not sure but i think this is probably the, the best uh, result we got out of our audit so thanks to their staff and our employees Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, I'd just like to say that Rich would be on screen to thank you, but his head got so big he doesn't fit in there. <laughs> All right, no further discussion. We'll uh, put those in the record. Item 18 is closed session. We do not have any this evening. And I will take a motion to uh, disconnect. Councilman Burns move that we adjourn i'll second that motion by burns second by welch to adjourn um no discussion please vote susan Reister. yes burns yes welch yes Stinson. yes cook yes and mccaw yes all voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, we'll see you all in person at the next meeting and uh, be safe. This conference is no longer being recorded.